everyone. I'm Carrie Scott here for the New Jersey State Museum. Welcome to Small Explorers. Small Explorers is our free program at the museum for children ages six months to five years old and their families. At each session, we explore a different theme through storytelling, museum objects, crafts, and games, and playtime. So this week, I want to talk about our state animal. Do you guys know what our state animal is? Well, it's also my favorite animal, and anybody who knows me well is laughing their butt off right now because they knew this video was coming. <laughs> this week, we're going to talk about horses. <laughs> horses are very expressive through their body language and their facial expressions. That's, how, that's a lot of how they communicate, especially through their ears. A horse's ears are very expressive. Um, they will stand straight up when they're alert and listening. When they are angry, they might pin their ears all the way back. And when they're relaxed, they might just have their head down, playing with their lips a little bit, and let their ears hang relaxed. And that's actually the inspiration for today's sign language sign. To make the sign for horse, you need to take your right hand, Put up two fingers to make kind of an L shape. You're going to put that up to just above your temple and then flick your fingers. Flick. It's kind of like a, how a horse's ear moves. They can move in all different directions, especially when there's a fly bothering them. They might flick the fly away with their ear. So think about it that way. Make your L, put it up to your head to make a horse's ear and then flick your fly away twice. Horse. So I wanted to show you guys some of the equipment that it takes to take care of a horse and to go out riding. Um, so the first one, when you want to go out to the field and catch your horse, you need a halter and a lead rope. I no longer have a lead rope. But the halter is something the horse wears on their face. Like our cats and dogs at home wear collars around their neck. The horse wears this over their face. This part goes behind their ears and then this part goes over their nose. So you would attach a lead rope right down here in order to lead them around. Uh, some of the other equipment I wanted to show you uh, these are grooming tools. So we have all different types of brushes for brushing off their coat. This is a hoof pick. This is for cleaning out their hooves. And then we also have combs and brushes for the mane and tail. But I don't have a horse here to demonstrate on, so I reached out to one of my friends who works at the museum. Uh, Beth Vital is in charge of designing our exhibits at the museum, but when she's at home, she spend, likes to spend a lot of time with her horses. Hi, I'm Beth Vital and I work at the New Jersey State Museum. I spend some of my free time taking care of horses. Horses are a lot of fun, but they're also a lot of work. Grooming is one way that we take care of our horses. This is silver, and the first thing that you do when you go to groom your horse is tie him to a secure place. The tools that we use to groom a horse are these right here. This is a curry comb. This is a stiff brush. This is a soft brush. This is the mane and tail comb. And this is a hoof pick. We start with the curry comb. And we start, the curry comb uh, removes excess hard dirt that is in the horse's body. To use it, we start in circular motions on his neck and we work down the sides of his body towards his tail, loosening up all the excess mud and dirt. This is to get it out from 
you know, deep down in his skin. We avoid using the curry comb on his face and his legs because those are more sensitive areas. The next instrument that we use is a stiff brush. And the stiff brush removes more of the dirt. You use the stiff brush again from the neck with brisk movements to get more of the dirt that the curry comb brought up off the horse. The stiff brush is also just to be used on his body and the less sensitive areas. You work from the head back. And you stay to the side of the horse. You never go directly behind the horse. The next brush that we use is a soft brush. And this time you can do his face. They like getting their faces done with a soft brush. Right, Silver? Yeah, you like that. And you can do the ears. start up here and then work down. I'm only doing one side to keep our time to a minimum. This gets off the fine dirt that the other two tools brought up to the surface. All the fine dirt coming off. And then we can do his legs too. There we go. That's this side. A little more up here. Those are very dirty. They like to roll. Rolling helps actually protect them from the flies because the, the mud gets caked on and gives them like an armor from the flies. The next instrument is the mane and tail comb. We use this. He grabs some of the mane. This is the foretop actually between the ears. You grab it with one hand and then carefully brush with the other. Pull the mane and tail comb like through the mane and tail. First, I like get some of the bigger knots out with my fingers and then carefully pull it through his mane. There we go. And then when we move to the tail, Again, make sure you stay to the side and you take a handful in one hand and brush with the other. I like to start at the bottom and work up. Get these little pieces. And then the next tool that we'll use is a hoof pick to clean his feet. This is a hoof pick. To pick up a horse's foot, you run your hand down the back of his leg and you pick his foot up. And you take this hoof pick and you scrape from the heel, which is here, to the toe. This removes rocks and hardened dirt and other things that might have gotten caught in his foot that would make him lame. Whoop. Whoop. This part here, this triangular part here, is the frog. 
And that's the shock absorber of the hoof. We're careful not to scrape that too hard, but we do want to get around it to make sure that there's no foreign hard things in there. Oh. And then you can use the brush part of the hoof pick and that foot is nice and clean. There you go. I'll lift up the back foot to show you how that works. Again, you run your hand along the back and he picks it up. And you're careful to go from heel to toe, exposing the frog. And to make sure there's no rocks. The first thing you check for if your horse looks lame is his feet to make sure that there's no rocks or anything else in there. So the final thing that you, well not the final, but the next thing that you do is you take a washcloth or a towel and you wipe the fine dust off of his face, his ears, he really likes that. And then what I do is I use a towel for the rest of the body because he's got a lot of body. Silver's a thoroughbred and he's 17 hands, which is for a pretty big horse. And even though he looks like he's white, they really call it gray. The only thing that's really white is an albino and albinos have red eyes. You don't see them very much. Now the final thing that I do in the summertime and in fly season is fly spray. This helps protect the horse from these pesky insects. Again, I start on his legs and gently I avoid his head I don't want to get it in his eyes. And spray carefully over the whole body. And there you go. Now if I was putting a saddle on this horse, I would, I would spray the spray last. Because you don't want the fly spray to be under the saddle. But we're not going to ride today. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Beth and Silver. And I wanted to show you guys some of the equipment we might use for riding. The most important piece of equipment that you need if you're going to go riding is a helmet. And then there is the equipment that the horse wears. So this is an English style saddle. Uh, in the United States, we also have a lot of Western styles. Those are the bigger ones that have the horn on the front. Um, so this part is the stirrup. This is where your feet would go. And there's also straps for something called the girth, which is a big strap that holds all of this onto the horse's back. Underneath the saddle, you have a whole bunch of different types of saddle pads. This is a foam pad to help take some of the pressure off the horse's back. And then we also have a fleece pad. And on the bottom, this is called a dressage pad. So horses are a lot of work. They're a lot of fun. And they do a lot of different jobs about around the state. But something else that horses do is inspire artists all over the world. I want to visit American Perspectives now and show you a sculpture by American sculptor Deborah Butterfield. Let's go take a look. Welcome to American Perspectives, explorers. This sculpture by Deborah Butterfield is called Aiden. And Deborah Butterfield is best known for her sculptures of horses. She was actually born on May 7th, 1949, the same day as the 75th Kentucky Derby. It's a huge horse race. 
And she says this was one of the reasons that she chooses to sculpt horses. Um, a lot of her horses are made out of sticks and wood that she then takes and casts in bronze. Take a close look at Aiden here. What do you think this sculpture is made of? Yep, this sculpture is scrap metal. It's called using found objects in your work. So take a look at Aiden's face and neck and shoulder. What shapes do you see? Okay, explorers. So for this week, for our project, we are going to make recycled sculptures. So just like Deborah Butterfield uses found objects in her sculpture, um, what I want you to do is we're going to go through our recycling, make sure that uh, we clean thoroughly anything that we want to use for this project. Um, and I want you to find the shapes that match your animal. I'm going to be doing a horse, maybe just the neck and head. Um, so I've been looking through our recycling for things that I can use. So my challenge to you for this one is to find objects that match those shapes without cutting them. If you need to tear cardboard or paper, we can do that, but no cutting, no scissors. So we're going to need our recyclables um, and our uh, masking tape. This is painter's tape. You can also use masking tape. Um, so we're going to look at our animal and look for basic shapes. I'm going to be working with a horse. You can make a sculpture of whatever your favorite animal is. Maybe a cat or a dog, might be a frog or a lion. Um, I can't wait to see some of these. So I'm looking at some basic shapes. So our horse's neck is very, very bendy, but it's also kind of uh, cone shaped. And the head has a big kind of a circle here, rounded triangles for the ears. And the nose is kind of a wedge shape. So this is going to be our horse's neck. So, so far I have taken my container and bent it in a little bit to give it more of the same shape as the horse's neck. And I'm getting started on the round part of the head. I just need to make this a little bit bigger. So we're gonna start crumpling up more paper to go around it to make that shape. Now, if you have a very small explorer who's maybe about one, one and a half crumpling and tearing up newspaper just by itself is a very fun activity for them. I'm just going to keep making, building on this until it is as big as I need it to be. And then I will tape it up into a ball. So now that I have our neck and the upper part of the head, I'm going to use this to make our ears. All right, so I took some of my paper towel tube and tore off the corners to make the ears. Next, I'm going to take some more of this newspaper and crumple it up to start making the muzzle, his nose. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, this is my finished horse head. We have a plastic container for the neck are two balls of newspaper for the cheek and for the nose, the muzzle, and then it's all wrapped up in the paper towel tube that I kind of unraveled. So, small explorers, I'm really excited to see what you come up with, um, the shapes and the materials that you use. There is no wrong way to do this. Have fun with it. Thank you so much for joining me this week and I'll see you next time. Bye.